welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to see you all here. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about single cell data. And in this video specifically, I want to talk about reading single cell data into a SIRAT object in R. So in our previous video, we spoke about what is single cell data, specifically what is single cell RNA sequencing technology and how it differs from the bulk RNA sequencing. We also talked about the strength and weaknesses of each of those methods and then we later discussed some common terminologies that are used when we are processing single cell data. We also spoke about the packages that are available to process such data, where we also talked a little bit more about SIRAT and we took a look at the SIRAT object. Today, I want to continue the discussion and I want to talk about the different input formats uh, the data is present in and I want to demonstrate how to read that data from the various formats into a SIRAT object in R. Talking about the input file formats, in single cell sequencing technology, uh, we have a feature barcode matrix. Uh, and you can think of a feature barcode matrix as analogous to a count matrix in the bulk RNA-seq data. So essentially it's a huge matrix and the rows are the features or genes and the columns are the cell barcodes. The values in this matrix is uh, the count and it's called a sparse matrix because majority of the values are zeros. So these uh, feature barcode matrices are often stored in one or uh, any of these formats uh, that are mentioned in the table on the left. And today I want to actually uh, demonstrate how to read uh, in data from each of these formats uh, into a SIRAT object because we will be processing uh, the data further uh, using the SIRAT package in R. And so it's important to get uh, these data and read it into a SIRAT object first. For the demonstration today, uh, these are my requirements and I will be using two packages, SIRAT and SIRAT disk. So let's switch screens to R Studio and let's get started. Before I jump onto my R Studio screen and start reading uh, the single cell data, I quickly want to show you all these files. So I have downloaded multiple uh, single cell data sets from publicly available sources uh, and each of these data sets are in different uh, file formats. So I will be adding the link to the these files uh, in the description below, but I just quickly want to show you all the files that I have uh, before I move on to the R Studio and start reading uh, these files into the SIRAT object. So the first thing I'll do is load the libraries. Uh, and I said I will be loading two libraries, that is SIRAT and SIRAT disk. So quickly loading in the libraries. So the first data set that I will be reading in is from the .rds format and uh, .rds is an R data format. Uh, it is not necessary uh, that only the feature barcode matrix is saved as RDS. Sometimes when you're retrieving the data from the publicly available sources, the even the SIRAT object with uh, the completely processed data uh, stored in a SIRAT object can also be saved as a .RDS uh, file. Uh, so I quickly want to show you how to read that. So there is a function in R to do that. The function in R called read RDS and you provide the name of your file. So I'm just going to copy the name of the file from here. And you assign it to a variable. So this is RDS object and we run this. As we can see that it has finished running and our RDS object has been created in our data pane. Uh, so it seems that this is uh, a SIRAT object and it's not uh, the raw uh, uh, feature barcode matrix. It's not a count matrix. It's a completely processed SIRAT object. And if you want to take uh, a look at your object, you can just type str uh, and name of your object. And you will be able to see in your console, it seems that this is a processed data set. Um, and if you want to see what type of object this is, you can just scroll to the top and you will be able to see that it's a um, SIRAT object uh, from the packet SIRAT. So as I said, uh, it is not always that you, uh, that you see only feature barcode matrix being saved as RDX. Sometimes when you're retrieving the data from the publicly available sources, even the process data is saved as uh, .RDS uh, object. 
The next format we'll talk about is .hdf5 format. Uh, so cell ranger outputs the feature barcode matrix in uh, .hdf5 format and uh, there is a function to read uh, this uh, file into um, into r so the function is read 10x5 and you provided a file name so i'm just going to copy the file name and paste it right here then we will use the default parameters. We want to use the names uh, of the features and also need to have unique features. I'm just going with the default values here and I'm going to read it into, let's call it HDF5 project and run this. These files are a little bigger files, so it usually takes a minute or two for them to be read into R. Uh, so now that we see that it has finished running with some warning message, and right now I'm choosing to ignore the warning message. So since this is supposed to be a feature barcode matrix, let's take a look at what the feature barcode matrix looks like. Um, and I'm going to read only the first 10 rows and the first 10 columns. And it seems that this is what a feature barcode matrix look, looks like with the rows as features and the column names are the uh, cell barcodes. So this is just uh, reading in the feature barcode matrix, but we want to convert this. This is not a Serat object right now. We want to convert this into a Serat object. So to do that, we have a function called create Serat object. And since this is our feature barcode matrix, since these are our counts, we provide them as, uh, we provide them into the count parameter. And let's save this to Serat HDF5 and run this. Now it has finished running and it has created another variable uh, in the another object in our, our data pane and we can see that this is now a Serat object. If you want to take a look at what it looks like, you can type str and the name of the object, Serat object and click enter and you'll be able to see that this is what our basic Serat object looks like. So the next type of file format that we'll be talking about is the dot matrix file. So if you have your data processed by the cell ranger pipeline, uh, it outputs a matrix file uh, and you'll be able to read in the matrix file uh, into R. So along with the matrix file, it also outputs the barcode and the features file. So you can use all of that information to read into R and then finally use uh, that object uh, to read into uh, the Serat object. So let me show you how we do it. So there is a function called read matrix and you can provide it with complete parts to your matrix feature files and the barcodes so i'm going to provide the complete path to my files here and read this into a matrix object. So again, since these are individual files containing the matrices, the, the features and the barcodes, this would be, uh, this would uh, ultimately be saved as a count matrix. And this count matrix could be read into a Serat object just like we did previously usually takes time for these files to be read into the object uh, but it also depends on the size of each of these files now that it has finished running uh, we can see a matrix object being created again this is not a serat object uh, this is supposed to be a feature barcode matrix so let's take a look at what it looks like just to make sure that we have the right information in the object 
and looking at the first 10 rows and the first 10 columns we can see the rows as the features the columns as the uh, cell barcodes and these are supposed to be the counts now that we have our counts let's create a serat object and in the parameter counts let's provide this object and save this to another object called serat matrix and this would be our serat object it seems that our serat object has been created and let's make sure that our serat object looks fine so it seems that it has created our serat object with our data and now we can use the serat object for further downstream processing talking about the next type of format which is the dot loom format so similar uh, to the serat object there are also other types of formats which are uh, designed to efficiently hold uh, large uh, single cell uh, data sets uh, many times when you're trying to access the single cell data sets from the uh, public uh, platforms or repositories, uh, many times the data are stored in the dot loom format and it's helpful if you can read the dot loom format into a serat object uh, if we are planning to stick with the serat package to perform the downstream analysis. Uh, so there is a function to do that. So we use the function called connect. And the first parameter would be the file name and we provide it with the file name uh, which ends in dot loom and the mode here would be to read and we read this into a loom object now let's run this it seems that it has finished running and had created some uh, object into the data pane and if you want to take a look at how a loom object looks like it looks uh, something like this so it's it is a different uh, class and it's a different objects object and has a different setup compared to our traditional um, feature barcode matrix or a serat object so this is how a loom object looks like so now let's save this into a serat object so in order to do that we can simply type as serat the name of the loom object and save it into a serat object so it seems that i have misspelled the name of the loom object And it takes a few minutes for uh, this to finish running. We can see that this has finished running and let's look at the Serat object. And we can see that a Serat object has been created uh, from the loom object, from the data that was present in the loom object. So talking about the last format, which is uh, .h5ad or AND data format. And AND data is another format uh, which is also used uh, to store single cell data. And this format is used for storage in the ScanPy package. Uh, ScanPy is a Python package uh, to process uh, single cell data. So the first step uh, here is to convert this uh, format, this AND data object into uh, an H5 Serat object. So we use a function called convert and the first param parameter would be the name of the file. So I'm just copying the name of the file in the AND data format and we want to convert it into an H5 Serat and I'm going mostly with the default parameters here. So I'm not going to assign it, assign this to another variable because once I finish running this step, it's going to create another file with the same name, uh, but with this extension. So I'm just going to run this. 
it has finished running now so let's go back to our terminal and see whether the file dot hpyserar has been created we can see that there is another file with the same name uh, but with dot hpyserar has been created so our first step has been uh, has successfully run and now we can read this dot uh, hpyserar uh, file into our serat object there is a function from the serat disk package to load the h5 serat file which is load h5 serat and we provide it with the name of the file so i'm just going to copy the name same name but just change the extension and now i will be assigning this to a serat um, and data object it seems that it has finished running so now let's take a look at the Serat object and it seems like it has successfully created one from the and data object. That's all I had for today's video. Uh, this was fairly simple, short and straightforward. Uh, in the next video, I plan to demonstrate how to process the single cell RNA-seq data and demonstrate the standard workflow steps. As I said, I will add the links to all the data sets that I used today in the description below. If you like this video and found this informative, uh, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and share the video and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.